Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, uh, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just be up front here. I'm recovering from a loss in my NBA game of the week, just my private NBA game of the week. I took uh, the Houston Rockets yesterday, laying three and a half points against the Golden State Warriors in the NBA. Right now, Kevin Durant didn't even play. Houston had one night in a row. You know the rest. A guy named DeMarcus Cousins showed you in flashes why he is the best big man in the game. Right? Better than Joel Embiid, in my opinion. Right? He showed you why he's the best. If I'm Kevin Durant, and I look at the way the team played yesterday, Klay Thompson hitting threes, Boogie Cousins dominating underneath, Steph Curry being Steph Curry, then I've got to ask myself if I'm ever going to be surrounded by this level of talent if I leave this team. But let's pivot to boxing. This is a late video, but I believe it needs to be made because the fight is a very important fight. The Brian Castano, Arislandi Lara fight, right? Let me just point out for those researching boxing, one of the reasons why I believe Mikey Garcia not only beats Errol Spence, but walks him down is because Brian Castano beat Errol Spence in the amateurs. Right now, I've been searching long and hard for that tape. I haven't been able to find it. But looking at Castano's game, I'm guessing he cut off the ring, was front foot heavy, and split the uprights. Well, understand, he was the title holder when he fought Arislandi Lara a week and a half ago. The fight officially was ruled a draw. Let me just say, I believe the scores got this right. Understand, photo finishes really apply in horse racing, not in boxing. If you're going to take a title, you've got to beat the champ. If the fight is so close that people are saying, oh, gee, did this guy win 114, 113, or what do you have, 114, 114? If it's that close, I think the champ needs to leave the ring with the belt. Right? Split decisions, in my opinion, one man's opinion, are where the challenger has done better than the champ. But we're asking ourselves, did he do better enough to warrant taking the title? Now, I'll agree. You have a lot of gray areas in boxing. Uh, this, by the way, is one of the reasons why I had such a big problem with some of the decisions where champions lost their belt. Now, here... It's a close fight. I'm not here to say it was anything other than a close fight. You know, if you believe the pundits, Castano had to win the last two rounds to get the draw. That's how close the fight was. But as you were watching the fight, you thought to yourself, you know what, this is going to be a photo finish. Right? Lara, former champ, isn't the champ going into this fight? Isn't that the argument the Marvin Hagler crowd used for the Ray Leonard fight? Right? The champion's Castano. So at the end of the fight, if you're looking around saying, wow, who won that fight? Then to me, a draw is the perfect outcome. The champ keeps his title. The other guy didn't beat the champ by enough to take the title. I know there are many of you who view this as track and field and who are going to say, I'm sorry, Dwyer, 
but 9.89 should always be 9.9. Right? They, they say, hey, whoever wins the fight, wins the fight. I'm just telling you, this is more like baseball. Tie goes to the runner. Since it's an inexact scoring system, if the fight is such where you're thinking, wow, well, Castano was collapsing the pocket. Castano was forcing the issue. Lara was unable to maintain distance. But Lara was landing the crisper counters. Right? If you're doing that calculus, Lara was masterful backing up. Right? If you're trying to trade guns for butter and you're weighing it and it's close and stuff like that, the champ needs to keep his belt. Let's give Castano credit for taking the fight and making it spirited. He's the champion and in my opinion deserves to be. I applaud the draw here. I know many gamblers are out there saying how could any gambler applaud a draw? I'm just talking as a boxing fan. Okay, I did not see Lara do enough to take Castano's belt. It's just that simple. And the fact that Castano finishes more strongly. You know, had Lara come out and won that 12th round, had he looked good doing it, then I would think, okay, I can see the case here. Right? In a similar situation, in a unification match. Right? Unification match. Jared Hurd came out in the 12th round and dropped Lara. Right? If you thought that fight was a toss-up, that 12th round drop was the margin of victory. Right here, Lara wasn't able to make the case in the 12th round. He just wasn't. I thought Castano deserved to leave the ring with his title. But the fight's important for another reason. Now understand, I'm someone sitting here who for years here online has said that he believes Arislandi Lara beat Saul Alvarez. Right? The reason I'm naming Saul Alvarez is simply put, he's one of the best fighters in boxing. He's that rare champion who takes on other tough opponents fight after fight. Right? So, understand. Had Lara been awarded the decision in that fight, that arguably would have been his biggest win to date. Now, in that fight, the criticism of Lara, and it's significant. Keep in mind, Canelo has a huge punch. I would say that's Canelo's calling card. Canelo, pound for pound, is one of the hardest punchers in boxing. Right? He visits 168. I know Rocky Fielding got destroyed by Callum Smith in one round, but let's say the Canelo beatdown was systematic and thorough. You understood that a 168 pounder had rarely been hit the way he was being hit by Canelo, who was coming up from 160. So he's fighting Lara. And the argument is that Lara ran too much in that fight. Isn't that the argument? Because Lord knows, Lara's landing the cleaner counters. Right? Lara's a guy who hits you, then moves away. Right? You don't have a chance to pay him back. His legs are just too good. That was his forte. Right? Negative energy, not positive energy. Counter puncher, not lead puncher. Right? You'd be looking at him, you would swing, he'd make you miss. Great defensively. Then he would hit you with a one or a one-two. Then he would leave the pocket. Then he would move away. So in the Canelo fight, the argument is, and it's a close fight, right? The argument is that Laura didn't engage enough. That Laura's too busy moving. He's not busy enough throwing and landing punches. 
right? There's a certain efficiency to Lara's game, and it's not the first fight where the opponent seems to be more active than Lara, right? You remember the controversial Paul Williams fight from many years ago? Well, let me just say this. As someone who's followed Lara's career, as someone who believes Lara beat Canelo, as someone who, even with the knockdown, is not sure that Jared Hurd beat Lara, Right? Just understand, though, that the Lara who fought Canelo no longer exists. Right? He's the fighter who you have to circle on your list. Folks, the legs just aren't the same anymore. He couldn't get away from Brian Castano. Let's face it, he couldn't get away from Jared Hurd. I'll agree, these guys are front foot heavy, but you know what they say in boxing. The legs are the first to go. Lara, highly skilled. His age is showing. His age is showing. So if he were to fight Castano again, I would take Brian Castano. Right? Understand, Lara just can't get away. He's someone who, a skilled fighter with an active front foot, can make a decision to follow him after the counters. In other words, he can no longer control spacing. And let's face it too, you should be concerned about the fact that in that 12th round against Hurd, he gets caught. Right? Hurd had more energy. Here, 11th and 12th rounds against Castano. Castano had more energy. Folks, you see the gray here. I'm just telling you, I've lived this. This is the way age is. You go to the park, you're playing basketball with some young guys, you're yourself the first half of the game. You're yourself. You're sticking some young guy who you know in your prime. Couldn't tie your shoelaces. Then you get to the end of the game and my goodness, your legs just aren't cooperating. Your mind is there. You know what you need to do. You see the guy driving by you you just can't move. You convince yourself, okay, I'm just going to let this slide here. I'm tired. I have an achy knee. That's the other thing, too. The aches and pains pop up, and they just don't go away. That bad shoulder, wow, that bad shoulder injury's lasted for weeks. Well, let me say, I'm looking at Lara, and his age is showing. So the Lara I saw against Castano would lose a rematch to Castano because I believe the younger fighter understood that he left some things on the table. Doesn't go to the body enough. Right? The blueprint he uses in the 11th and 12th rounds he should have used that earlier. Also, given that you know, you know, Lara's waiting for a counter. And given that Lara's best punch, Lara's a southpaw, was that straight left up top. Castano should have figured out how to just roll, bend at the waist. As he comes in, not leave himself open for straight left counters. Jared Hurd. I know a lot of people want that Lara Jared Hurd rematch. Right? I think Hurd beats him in the rematch. Because Hurd is a guy who, like Castano, is going to cut off the ring. Is going to be physical with you. Now, Hurd's a big man. He, he would have a harder time hiding himself than Castano. By the way, people need to think about that in terms of the Spence-Garcia matchup. I keep hearing... 
that, oh, Spence is big. I'm telling you, against a skilled fighter, too much size would be a handicap. Think about it. Who would have a harder time finding the other guy? If Mike Tyson fought Anthony Joshua, I'm telling you Mike Tyson would find Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, all day. I'm telling you Anthony Joshua would be reaching to find Mike. Mike gets in a crouch and starts moving like this. Joshua would have a hard time finding him. Right? Well, let me just say, I believe Hurd beats Lara. I believe Lara would have a better shot against someone like Jermel Charlo. Right? A guy who is episodic. Who isn't going to stay in the pocket and collapse the pocket. Who isn't going to overwhelm a counterpuncher with Valia. If Canelo fights Arislandi Lara today, I would take Canelo in that fight. Because Canelo would understand, you know what? The Lara who ran from me years ago, who I couldn't match in foot speed, I'm going to be closer to matching him now. Right? Let me also say, too, that boxing is a bit of an expectation game. If hunters like Canelo see hunters like Jared Hurd and Brian Castano having success in tracking down and cornering Arislandi Lara, then even if Canelo has a discouraging opening of the fight, he's going to think, look, I'm going to continue to pressure this guy because I've seen him wilt in the later rounds of these other fights. Right? So just understand, Father Time really beats all of us. Even unbeaten fighters like Floyd Mayweather, let's face it, the Floyd today loses to Floyd at 25. Right? Father Time eventually is the winner. Father Time is starting to catch up to Arislandi Lara. He's still a world-class fighter. He's still a world-class fighter. But that jab can't keep an aggressive young guy with an active front foot off of him. Right? You know in a Lara fight, he's going to end up over by the ropes. Not by design. But because the other guy is too active. Let me also say this too, and it has to be said. You know, the best public speakers, the best politicians, are the people who can read the room. Right? Bill Clinton. Right? The best in a debate I've seen. He could read the room, figure out which lines would work, which lines wouldn't work. Now, Everest Landy Lara, after this fight, said that he thought he was ahead eight rounds to four. He's way off. Right? I think Lara has reached the point a lot of older fighters reach. They're so focused on landing that pot shot counter. Right? They're so focused on doing the things they want to do. Right? That they forget about the bad optics of a younger guy hunting them down, cornering them, having more volume. Right? Getting them with their back up against the ropes. Folks, those are bad optics. Right? And I know, too, ego is a part of life. You're an older fighter, you've been a champion, you fought big names. I know it's hard for Lara to envision that his opponent is the one entering the fight with the belt. Right? If they're judges like me, who believe that 
you've got to beat the champ to take his title. In other words, running a 989 to the champ's 9.9 doesn't do it for me. If I, if I have to look at a photo finish to kind of ask myself, whose nose crossed the finish line first? Then I'm going to vote for the champ. No, no, you've, you know, quite frankly, if the champ runs a 99, if you run a 987, that's a split decision. To win the decision outright, in my opinion, it's you've got to run something like a 9.84 or something like that, where I see you clearly cross the finish line ahead of the champ. Then I say, all right, all right. You know, I'll concede their fights. Manny Pacquiao, Jeff Horn. Where you see the fight, you say, well, wow. You know, just based on fame, persona, box office appeal. Um, you know, you would imagine ties really for political reasons. Who do the promoters want to see win the fight? Ties would go to the box office cash cow. Right? Voting tends to be slanted toward box office cash cows, as Anthony Joshua and Canelo well know. Right? I'm just saying. Right? But if they announce it at a fight like Pacquiao Jeff Horn, that Jeff Horn's beaten Pacquiao, then you can say to yourself, well, you know, that fight was close. Had they announced that Lara beat Castano, I'd have thought, okay, well, this fight was in that gray zone. Right? But don't sneeze at boxing history. You've got to beat the champ to take his title. I'm just telling you, there are a lot of people who, at the end of that Ray Leonard-Marvin Hagler fight, thought to themselves, wow, Ray did a lot better than I expected. But not enough to take the title. Right? Laura, to me, has lost his ability to read the room. It costs him. His counters look great. Skill-wise, defense-wise, he's a more skilled fighter than Jared Hurd. Make no mistake about it. But a guy backing you up, walking through your counters, roughing you up, even if their punches aren't landing as cleanly as yours, a guy who has you covering up. A guy who finishes stronger than you. You've got to be aware of the fact that some judges are going to be impressed by that. Right? I think Lara is getting to the, dare I say it, Bernard Hopkins part of his career. Right? Bernard always complained about scoring, didn't he? Toward the end... You would watch Bernard Hopkins fights, the volume would drop, he would complain, he was always wrong. Right? Joe Smith knocks him out of the ring. Bernard's complaining. Eris Lanny Lara right now is complaining a bit too much. He's fading at the end of fights. His legs are no longer the same. If he fights an aggressive young colt, with an active front foot, right? A lot of stamina, high volume, who's going to be backing him up repeatedly. Granted, the young Colt's going to walk into some counters. That's what people do against Eriselandi Lara. But if the young Colt is prepared to follow Lara as he backs away from the pocket, you need to consider taking that young Colt in a fight against Lara. Let me say this too. And I thought this was a great move during the fight. Castano is very skilled deep in the pocket. So you'll notice, and I noticed this with Golovkin, you'll notice that there are times in this fight where Lara tries to grab him, right? Older fighters want to grab you. They want to rest. They want to win the exchange. Counterpuncher, lands a good counter on you, if he can tie you up, you don't get a chance to pay him back. What I like with Castano, why Castano is so dangerous going forward, and again, this is a guy who beat Errol Spence in the amateurs. He beat Sergei Derevianchenko. 
right? Castano has his hands in such a way and has his body in such a way that he is hard to clinch. So even a master clincher slash defensive fighter like Lara found that when he needed a breather he could not tie up Castano to get it. He just couldn't. Right? So put me among those who likes to draw. I don't believe Castano on this photo finish fight deserved to lose his title. Further put me among those who now has changed his mind a bit. I'd take Canelo in a rematch over Lara. I'd take Jared Hurd in a rematch over Lara. I'd take Castano in a rematch over Lara. Right? Father Time is a tough opponent. It robs you of stamina. It robs you of reflexes. It robs you of perspective. The ability to read the room. Father Time is landing some punches right now on Arislandi Lara. You saw that in the 11th and 12th rounds. He was up against two opponents. An active Brian Castano, the champion, and Father Time. Right? I'm just telling you, sooner or later, Father Time is going to tap all of us on the shoulder. Lara, world-class fighter, big name. He has many more world-class fights ahead of him. I'm just not sure he can beat a Jared Hurd or a Canelo at this point. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.